In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Scribo Feel Fountain Pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Play here with Blake's broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink. And as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. This is a Scribo Feel fountain pen, and I want to do a little bit of background on Scribo and Omas, but if you want to skip that, just take a look at the, the chapters. You can jump ahead. Scribo is a brand that was founded by ex-Omas employees and Scribo stands for Scrittura Bolognese, and that just means writing, and Bolognese meaning from Bologna, Italy, and Bologna is the historical home of Omas. Now, Omas is, in my opinion, one of the very best Italian pen manufacturers, or was, right up there with Aurora. I think they made the best quality pens comparable to Aurora. However, I think Omas pens were significantly more pretty, with I think the most beautiful pen being the Omas Extralutions, which then became the 557 uh, Paragon model, Art Italiana line. Those, in my mind, are the most beautiful pens out there. Now, Omas went out of business after, I think after the original family sold the brand, it just kind of went downhill. LVMH bought them. We started getting Bach nibs, which were still very good. Quality and service under LVMH was not very good. And then I believe a couple of different Asian holding companies acquired them. And eventually in 2016, they went bankrupt. Now, according to the Scribo people, they tried to buy the brand, but the owner didn't want to sell it. They wanted it to just be liquidated. That's one side of the story. I don't know if that's correct or not. But anyway, some ex-employees started Scribo. Now, what is very interesting about Scribo is that they got the rights to use the Omas nib setup or line within the Bach factory in Germany. So these nibs are very much like the nibs on the final run of Omas pens, the final sort of generation, I guess I would say. And those nibs were really excellent. And that, I think, is the main draw of the Scribo brand. And design-wise, I find these pens pretty unattractive. They do not do any in celluloid that I'm aware of. And the acrylics are very pretty. They are, you know, polished to a high degree. They are turned from solid blocks, just like an Omas would have been. But everything else about the pen, I think, is a bit more unappealing. <laughs> and the price, I, I see these go for $625 to like $800. They're somewhere in there. I think you can still buy this one in the $625 range from, I think I saw it at Gold Spot. Now, this is called the Promessa, which is a sort of mother of pearl red acrylic. It's pretty. It wouldn't be the color that I would choose, but looking at it, there is a lot of nice depth to the material, which I, I do like. There are 12 facets, and the shape of the pen, it's kind of a, I don't know, I want to say like it's almost like a, a vase-like shape where it kind of bulges out in the middle and comes into like a, the waist here at the clip or the cap ring rather and then it kind of bulges out again at the end it's i think it's ugly honestly um i hate to say that but it, it is not the most attractive and that's really what's kept me from buying one now this is not mine this is on loan 12 facets we have a blind cap here which is kind of interesting it does say scribo and made in italy there and then on the cap ring it says scribo and then there's like a very fine coin edge and on the back it says feel the writing which is not a great looking <laughs> font the descenders have more height to them, so it's almost like the script is not really centered on the ring. It doesn't look great to me. We do have a very robust looking clip, which kind of has a little sort of S shape to it. The 
trim on this pen, if you've noticed, has pitted. And I'm told from the user that they used this pen for a month and put it in a box, and I guess that's this is how it came out looking. I would be pretty annoyed if this was my pen because this is an expensive pen. What I think is also interesting is the only other pen I've had, or I've seen pitting issues like that when it was new, is my Omas Ojiva from the LVMH era of pens. The trim on this is just garbage quality. I sent it back to Omas, I don't know, that was probably 20 years ago or something like that. And it was months in Italy and it came back and they didn't fix it. Well, that was pretty annoying. That Omas and this pen are the only modern pens where I've really seen like a corroded trim issue. Kind of strange. I don't know if this is normal or if this is just a fluke with this pen, but I know for these Omas Ajivas, the galosh models, pictures of other ones that I've seen for sale all have this kind of pitting. So I, I don't know if this is normal for Scribo. I, I hope that it's not, or if it is, they will have fixed it. Now on the, the finial, we have this, I don't know, is that a leaf or a, a quill? And then again, we have that very fine kind of coin edge on there. Visually not a, a super attractive pen. Now there are definitely better looking colors than this. I would consider doing, you know, just a, probably a solid black one with a white metal trim I think would be pretty nice. Hide some of that ugly shape. It is a threaded cap and you'll notice the the ring on here is pretty thick. I mean it definitely has a weighty feel to it. It feels like it's good quality. The other thing that kind of put me off of, of these pens would be this big step up here. I was concerned about that. However, in use, there's enough grip section here that that doesn't really bother me. The Platinum Izumo has a big kind of step up like this, and that pen just does not work for me, whereas this, I, I have no comfort issues. We do have a metal ring here, and it is a little bit strange that we kind of have this round ring and then there's the faceting that goes around there. So this is a place that can catch some ink for sure, which I don't necessarily like. I also don't like that you have this thing that's going to be touching ink and it's not, you know, solid gold or whatever. So I don't know how long that's going to stay in good condition. But interestingly, compared to the rest of the metal trim, this actually looks fine. And then we have the nib here and the nib I'll do I'll show some comparisons of it against the, the Omas on the screen. It's an ugly nib. I, I mean, I think the shape of it is fine, but we have four different fonts. Feel the flex is what it says, and then it says Scribo and 18 karat, or 14 karat rather, 585. This has their flexible nib, and one of the great things about Scribo is that they have a lot of different nib options. You can have a flexible nib in various widths. They have stub nibs. Really. This pen is all about the nib, and this is an excellent, excellent nib. We have a ebonite feed, which is a similar profile to a Omas feed. It's not quite the same as the one, at least on my Ojiva, but very similar. And then in terms of the filling mechanism, it is a piston filler. Now I've seen these taken apart. It's not the same mechanism as what Omas used. Omas used three piece piston filler. So you have, would have the blind cap, you would have the barrel where the ink actually comes in contact with, and then you would have, you know, like the piston kind of plunger thing that you twists and moves down into the body. And that was it. So they were pretty easy to fix and they were very durable. Now they did get kind of stiff in time. I think from the factory, Omas never lubricated them that well, but very robust. This one does have an inner sleeve, so it's a little bit more complex in that way. Don't know if it's better, but it, it, it feels pretty nice. The other interesting thing about Scribo is they don't make anything themselves. They do assemble these at their headquarters in Bologna, but all the parts are made by other OEM manufacturers, so I don't really know where the components of this pen are made other than the nib, which is made uh, in Germany. I assume the rest of the, the construction is Italian, you know, a company like Joya, I think would be a very likely candidate to make a lot of the parts for this because they are, well, one of the, the major OEM pen part manufacturers out of Italy. The cap does not post 
onto the back, which is too bad. That's also unlike Nomas pen, so that is disappointing for sure. Now let's do some measurements. So in terms of length, and this is no question a big pen, we're looking at about 148 millimeters long. Oh boy, and I just splattered ink everywhere. This is about 136 millimeters, and it doesn't post, but we'll do the grip section. 11.6 at the widest, and then right at the end here, it's a little bit 10.6 so you got about a millimeter taper there in terms of the body width I know people have asked about this kind of at the widest point here we're looking at about 16.6 this is a big pen no question about that in terms of the weight 39 grams pretty substantial pen 21.4 so it definitely has a nice weightiness to it you definitely feel that solid acrylic one of the things that I did find a little bit strange, although you get used to it, is that my hand, because it's a faceted grip section, it never really felt like it quite kind of found the right space. Like I'm just sort of kind of awkwardly on those facets. Now, in longer writing sessions, I ignored it. I mean, it, it didn't become a problem, but first impressions were like, oh, this feels a little bit weird, a little bit off. Let's do some comparisons here to some other pens. This is a full size. Omas uh, Jiva. This would have been, they're roughly the same length. This is just a wider pen for sure. Compared to a Mont Blanc 149, pretty similar. I think the Mont Blanc is maybe a touch shorter and this is actually wider at the widest point. And then here it is with a 3776 in Briarwood and a Lummy 2000. So big, big pen for sure. Gonna be doing the writing sample on a Papermind Mitsubishi Bank Paper Notebook. These notebooks are really excellent with fountain pens and for Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers, you can get 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. So this is a Scribo feel and this is the fine Flex nib, and this is Hiroshi Tsuki Yo. Do fast writing. So performance wise, this nib I think is really good. I've had no issues with reliability. Uh, it always writes right away. I think this was actually a skip, but in normal writing, I haven't experienced any skipping issues. This has been a really excellent nib. I actually think I prefer it to my Mont Blanc Calligraphy Flex nib. I'll do a little comparison of that, but you can get some nice flex here and it does keep up pretty nicely. Now compared to the Mont Blanc here, we can get an oopsie. It's pretty similar in terms of width. I think this can go a little bit wider. But I actually think the Scribo is a smoother nib overall, and I think it flexes a bit easier. So for a flex nib, I'm really impressed with the Scribo. I think I have questions about the, the trim quality. I don't wanna buy one and have that be an issue, but I am gonna be looking out for a Scribo probably in a better <laughs> looking color combo than this, because this is a really excellent nib. All the nibs are hand tested and checked to make sure that they are perfect before they leave the Scribo assembly facility, I guess is what you would call it. And very happy with this nib, really excellent. So what are my pros and cons for the Scribo Feel fountain pen? Well, the biggest pro is the nib. This is a really nice writing nib for a modern pen. I think this has one of the nicest nibs that I've used. I like it better than my Mont Blanc 149 calligraphy nib. I think this is 
smoother and more easily flexible than that calligraphy nib on the 149. It is comfortable. You can't post it, but the grip section is long and there's, uh, it's got a nice width to it. And this pen has a nice solid feel to it when you're writing. Very much enjoyed writing with this pen. Now, in terms of cons, um, it's ugly. That is the main reason why I have not bought one of these. Now, I know that's going to be offensive to some people. It's just not a pretty shape. It's kind of bulbous, and then adding these facets to it, I just don't think helps. The And maybe I'm being extra hard on it because these are Omas employees, and this is an Italian pen, and to me, the Omas Extra Lucian's, you know, Paragon pen is like the most beautiful fountain pen to my eye and this is real far from that even though it is faceted and it's made by the same some of the same employees or whatever it just didn't translate here this is ugly other issues you know the the pitting or the plating issues on the pen that's not really confidence inspiring but the rest of the pen does feel solid it writes nicely the piston works well but I don't, I really don't like to see that. And I really haven't seen that on a lot of other pens other than my very first Omas, which was a LVMH era Omas, which did exhibit some pitting almost immediately after I got it, which is kind of the same story with the owner of this pen. So yeah, not impressed by that. It doesn't post, that is annoying. That was something that a Omas mostly always did. I, I mean, all the Art Italiana, the Ajivas, and the Extra Lucians I've had posted, So, and the Extra Pens also. Um, so, don't like that. Don't like the, the their engravings, uh, like feel the writing on the back, that doesn't look good, and the engraving on the nib also doesn't look great. Just style-wise, it's a real miss for me. Uh, it is expensive, but for how well this pen writes, I kind of don't really fault it for that. I mean, I do wish it was better looking, but and that it didn't have these pitting issues, but that might be just an issue with this specific pen. But it's expensive, but I, I kind of think it's worth it. Anyway, that's it. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen, paper, and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much, and until next time.